I'll have nothing to say in the morning If I can't remember my dreams Still have a feeling that something was buzzing In and out of my head like a bee I can't figure out why I woke With nothing but a croak in the words that I spoke When all I was trying to do was call for help, something broke Nothing came out when I yelled Get away from me I'll have nothing to say sometimes I'm better with words if I can get them to rhyme Give me a minute, I'll get it Give me the morning Figure out why I won't fall to the brim or on the edge of a joke. Heavy like a limb or light as a kid. Given the time I could remember it, would you stay with me? Goodbye, I love you. Oh
My name is Kate Rudy, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. What you just listened to is um, some songs from some old records and some newer songs and songs that are to be released. I believe the first song I played was Dance It Away, and that is the, uh, it's a, uh, the first single I ever came out with after my first record. And my, um, it was produced and recorded in my friend Jack Hallenbeck's childhood bedroom over the summer of 2019 and it sounded very different than it does on the recording because we used a drum machine and I did not have one here today and then I think the next song I played was Boy from Charlevoix which is a song off of my first record um, Rock and Roll Ain't For Me and it is about a boy from Charlevoix, Michigan and I wrote it while I was living in Boone, North Carolina and the next song I played was Crazy. And I wanted to play that one because I've had it written for a long time, but I've never had it recorded. And I like having it in different stages um, until I can figure out how to wrap it up, put a bow on it. And then the last song I played was Opacity. And it's, uh, that song is going to be on a record that I just finished during the quarantine. I've been playing the violin and, since I was five and started playing the guitar as a teen, but didn't think it was gonna be my career until I um, 
didn't think anything else was going to be my so I, till I ruled out everything else. Me and my sister grew up going to fillers conventions in uh, southwest Virginia. Um, our parents have some family land out there that we grew up on during the summers and whenever we could go. And it, I grew up with the Suzuki method of classical violin, and the fillers conventions were fun because we were already being trained to learn by ear, so to sit in on jams and kind of learn on the spot and perform was very fun for us. Well, I've played in other people's bands before, um, but I haven't, like I played in Skylar's band one time or like Libby Rodenbow's band one time. I've been in some cover bands. But in college, I was in two different, one was a folk Americana trio where I played the fiddle and sang harmonies. Another one was like a pretty, I wouldn't say radio country, but country band that I also played fiddle and sang harmonies in. You definitely have to like it. I'm not even going to say you have to practice, but you have to like it, you have to want to do it, and you have to be proactive about getting out there and talking to people and asking questions. And I would say find another job while you're at it. But definitely don't try to force something that you're not very interested in, in the first place. Like, if this is what you want to do, you should do it. Well, it, I don't, it attracts me, it attracted me because I liked having a community where I didn't have to be talking about music all the time, or I had something else to commiserate about with people. Because sometimes, I mean, as with any job, I think being a musician can be stressful. And you just don't want to be talking about it all the time. It just, it'll wear you thin. And I also think, yeah, having something else to do really, one begets the other. Like, I'm more inspired to do music if I've been doing work all week, if I've been on my feet all week. During quarantine, I've been not working in a service industry for the most part, and also not really doing a lot of music, so. Oh yeah, I did finish a, I did record an entire record. But other than that, I really haven't been doing much music. I think working on the record has led me to not be as creative like in writing new songs because I'm really focused and excited about this one project. Um, and also when I finished it, I kind of had, I was listening, when I finished the record, I was listening to it with these noise canceling headphones and it felt like, I guess they were just really good headphones, but it felt like somebody else was singing into my face, like inches from my face, and I was like, I just forgotten completely about where those songs had come from in the, in the first place, like three years ago, four years ago, less than a year ago. And um, that kind of emotion hit me, and it was like, it's done. <laughs> and it allows, I feel like it allows me to start working on new stuff. But I still have to put this one out, so got a lot of work to do. But. I had just done a, 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 a month-long cross-country tour opening up for um, one of my favorite bands, Mandolin Orange, and they, uh, oh, and then I was about to leave for another tour, so I was kind of like working at the bar and ready to go, and, and then, like, yeah, quarantine hit, and I was stuck at home. For sure, once the stress was off to do something, I... Like, once the pressure was gone, I made a record. And it was so much fun. And it, we did, like, most of it... Well, we did a lot of it at the studio, but everything that wasn't the full band or the lead vocal or something, we, me and um, Andrew, who produced my first record, produced this one, we just did in my back room or in his basement. And, like, that was so nice to do that every couple of weeks and not have a timeline on it and to actually have fun with it. And that was really cool. Definitely since we did it during COVID, there was a lot of like, um, like everyone was wearing masks and everyone was tested and you had to, it was, there was just an added la layer of intensity maybe, or just like, it wasn't, the, wasn't that there was pressure on it, but it definitely made it seem more important <laughs> than maybe if it wasn't a scary time. I don't know any, I don't know anything about production. I didn't know anything about production and I don't know anything about I don't know anything about songwriting. 
and I don't really, I didn't know anything about touring. And I think just once you start doing it, you, you just believe in yourself that you can do it and you just have to be doing it. Like with production, I've just been paying attention and wanting to, like I wanted to be there for mixing, which I'm not sure was a good idea. But I think I learned a lot just by being in the room. And then with touring, I would say learn where you can get some healthy food. Stop for your bathroom breaks. Books on tape. Don't be afraid to ask, where am I supposed to go right now? What am I supposed to be doing? And take your alone time, because sometimes you're going to be really surrounded by people. Yeah. Make a space for yourself wherever you are. Make a home for yourself wherever you are. Um, with songwriting. Yeah, I just like writing things down when I think of them. And I don't finish songs quickly. I don't think I've finished a whole song, maybe one, this entire year. So I think something will come together soon enough if I put my mind to it. If you run it by a friend, don't be afraid to run it by a friend and let them give input. Um, maybe one day I'll just go through my notes and put it all together. And, that, and then all that will be a song. I don't know. I would just say take care of your space. This is maybe unsolicited advice. I'm not sure this is an advice interview, but it can be, and it is now. So take care of your space. Guard your space. Take care of your time. Don't do anything you don't want to do. Live shows TBD, but I have a website. It's katerudy.com. My name is spelled K-A-T-E-R-H-U-D-Y. The other day, my dad said to me, are you ever going to change your band name? And I was like, no. He's like, good. I like being Kate Rudy's dad. It was really cute. But yeah, uh, I am on, I think I'm on everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, under my name. And Bandcamp as well. Oh, Spotify, Apple Music. Yes. The works. I don't care where you stream. Do what you need to do. I uh, bought this clarinet kind of early in the quarantine, and I've been working on it. It's a tough instrument, but it's fun to play.
right, it's nice and cold. Let's try to plan some guitar. This is uh, this is based on an on an old uh, Bulgarian sort of brass band number.
Uh, this one's called Nahawa. number if I can pull it off. She. This is kind of a Greek tune.
Now that we got no noise from outside, I could try to investigate the acoustic properties of this loading dock.
Yeah, well, uh, my name is Bob. I usually go by Crow Meat Bob or Adam Rick Bob or Moat Crawl Bob or Teamwork Bob, some variation on that. This is the first time I've ever gone by Teamwork Bob. <laughs> yeah, keep that in the interview. That was a nice moment. Oh, it was early in the morning. It wasn't early in the morning. It was like 11 o'clock, but it was morning and uh, cold. It was really cold. And I tried to play music. Well, it's a lot worse playing guitar. The clarinet was, was more or less fine. I mean, I didn't feel that. I was kind of not very together that morning either. I mean, I just kind of didn't feel that great. So I kind of felt unfocused and and unable to do the kind of stuff I wanted to really do. But I think, I, you know, I think it was okay, I guess. It's a way, it's a technique of keeping the airflow going through the horn. Um, it's a traditional technique. I, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is the old didgeridoo artists in uh, native Australia, um, which I imagine is really hard. I've tried to do it with a bass clarinet with no mouthpiece, just like buzzing into it the way you would like a didgeridoo. And I cannot keep a tone, you know, going very solid that way. Um, you know, you, I guess you play it more like a trumpet or a trombone where you buzz your lips or, you know, flap your lips into it. Um, it's tough. I, for a long time, I thought I wasn't even going to be able to do it. Like, they tell you, they're, they're, you know, you can look up YouTube videos or whatever the fuck, but uh, um, they tell you to, like, practice with a straw and a glass of water. Well, that's nothing. That's easy compared to playing through a horn. But the idea is, do you, uh, you're, when you're breathing in through your nose, you're keeping the airflow going by pushing it out just with your mouth, your cheeks, or your abisher, or whatever. So, you know, you know, you just keep blowing and keep it, keep it going just from your mouth while you're, while the air is going down your throat by way of your nose. And for a long time, I just couldn't even keep the horn sounding when I tried to do that just the mouth part I couldn't even make a sound out of the horn but then eventually it started happening and then once it started happening it kept happening and now I'm getting better at it now I could I could probably maintain just a single solid note for at least 10 minutes you know I haven't really tried to do much longer than that yeah uh, the clarinet is something that you know I've just loved for a long time but only got one recently um like a month, a couple of months after the quarantine hit, um, I picked up a clarinet. Uh, they just happen to have one that's a hybrid of different brands, kind of different parts of the instrument or different brands. So they sold it kind of cheap. Still, you know, those instruments can be expensive. So that's, yeah, that's obviously a big barrier in people getting into those kind of instruments when you can get, you know, uh, a guitar for 150 bucks these days or less, 50, whatever. I picked up an alto sax in like the late 90s. And then a year after that, it would be like 97 or 96. A year after that, I got a bass clarinet, a pawn shop. I, you know, there, I've, listened, I've been listening to jazz since pretty much high school. Um, and, you know, got really heavily into it in college and after, you know, even more and more. And still, you know, it's something, it's a lifelong thing. Once you get into it, you're going to keep delving into it. You know, you're going to keep exploring because there's so much history and so many cool players. And yeah, saxophone's a big part of that, you know. <clears throat> and I've been playing bass and guitar and stuff. And I was also really into free jazz and, and like no wave and all kinds of just noisy shit. And I was like, I can just make noise and make something make sense. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Performance of my own material, I don't. I do remember the first time I played at a, like a venue in front of people. And the first time I just played at a house in front of people before that. That wasn't supposed to be like a concert. You know, it was just we were just practicing and these, they just happened to have like a holiday party at the house or something. So we had to go out in the backyard and try to play. <laughs> People were very nice. That was, we were this literal, literally a garage band. And this guy was a drummer and lived in this house and we'd just go over there like twice a week and play in his garage. And we tried to do like 
you know, Black Sabbath meets Last Exit, like just we just ro try to rock out and make a bunch of, and, and improvise. I was playing bass and my friend John Aguero was playing guitar who was a big influence and still is. Depends what you call practice. Today I, I kind of was doing this thing where I'd just be doing something else or like watching some show or, or listening to music and just every once in a while I just grab my, I keep my clarinet right down there at the end of the couch. I just grab it and kind of try to think about it, play play some melodies or whatever, or just do something on it. And then if I figure, if I get get something that's kind of sounds interesting, I'll elaborate on it a little bit. But then I just almost put it down almost immediately. I just like kind of just fiddle with it, I guess. But there have been things I've worked more focusedly on, especially earlier in the pandemic. It was, I was like way more focused. <laughs> I need to get back to that place. Yeah, playing parking decks a bunch. Um, sometimes I live stream. Most of the time I live stream it, but not always. Just found a really good sounding one down on, off of Hillsboro recently, so I've been going there. Good, yeah, excellent cool. reverb. It's just, it's just like gorgeous sounding chamber but it's the nastiest ugliest like underground garage it's kind of perfect that way <laughs> yeah i've been kicked out twice but i've kind of figured out you know don't be next to a hotel this guy actually told me one time when he was when a security guy I was kind of walking by while i was playing there i stopped and asked him if i should split and he's like no you're not near a hotel you're not uh, uh there's no residential stuff around here you know, you just keep doing what, whatever, you, whatever you need to do.